if you recognize these guys, you know I'm going to be talking about Space Hulk, one of my favorite games of all time. And ever since I started with these guys, what I always wanted to do was to have a 3D corridor system. That always seemed like the epitome of uh, the Space Hulk game, if I could do that. But back in the day, you were limited to maybe doing it out of wood or plaster. And it just wasn't feasible, be so time consuming to do. But with the advent of 3D printing and a lot of the new technology out there, it became possible to actually make this dream a reality. A lot of what I looked at when I was online seemed too big and bulky, um, or you needed a resin printer to do it. I wanted to be able to do this simply on an FDM printer. I also, as I was doing it, just wanted to change it up and be able to make sure that the new models would would fit on there well. They're a little bit bigger than the original ones. Space Marines have been growing over the years. So I decided that that'd be a good opportunity to change it up a little. At the same time, trying to keep everything about the same size as it was in the original. So I mocked up some little paper models just to see if it was feasible. And, and I think it was. One of the other things that I wanted to do as I was coming into this was to make these small enough that it wouldn't take me forever to paint. I wasn't worried about extreme detail. I let the figures do that for themselves. And I, like I said, I wanted this to be able to print on a filament printer, FDM, no supports, none of that. So I had to keep it fairly simple. So this was the first prototype design that I, I came up with. I liked that the wall seemed a little bit short. So I decided to try some other options. This was the second one I came up with. Sort of a happy mistake on this one. Um, I made the walls too thin and it didn't print out. Amazingly enough, the top bar did print out. No supports, nothing in there. I filled it in in a few places just to get sort of the feel of it. I like the size, but I also didn't like the, the height of it. It seemed a little excessive, a little too high. Didn't really need all that height. And this would also stop me from stacking these and it'd take up probably twice as much space and storage and transportation as I wanted it to. So a few more iterations. Came up with this one, changed the angle on the walls, brought it in a little bit, made it a little bit higher, still not quite high enough. And then I finally ended up with, on my last try, this one here. And I think this probably is the best one and the one I'm going to be going with. So you see the, the figures fit in there. Still claustrophobic. They can turn around. There's enough room, but not too much room. The walls are angled still. So when you're moving your blips around, you can still do that pretty easily. Not much of a problem. I imagine when the game board is all laid out, uh, I didn't want it to be too narrow or you might not be able to see something that's that's far away. But this is sort of the final iteration of everything. A couple of things that I did come up with as I was going through these is realizing that the floor didn't need to be, I think I had it five millimeters thick at the beginning, really didn't need to be that thick. So I knocked it down to two. For connectors, I didn't want to have to have a whole bag full of connectors to carry around and put in and out. So my first thought was maybe magnets, but magnets can be a little bit of a pain. I've used them before, but if you mix the polarities up on them, um, it can be a real pain in the butt once the little tiny things get glued in there. If they're wrong, you'll never be able to connect it. They'll just pop out. So I think what I'm going to do is go with call LRP, little round pegs, just take some dowels or some little plastic pieces, get them just enough so they can mate up with the next one and they should all go together pretty quickly. I also decided that for the tiles, I'm going to go with just doing them separately, make the different styles of tiles and put them in there. That way, if there's a failed print, I'm not wasting all the extra time to print the tiles and the outside. I can mix and match. Um, 
I can probably put some damaged tiles or some unique tiles in each one and build them pretty much each corridor a little bit custom just to the way I want it. So that's what I've got so far. I'd love to hear your comments and your feedback on this. And maybe I'll see you out there someday. Thank you very much. Have a great day.